Hello and welcome everyone. Today I want to go over the build process of the big terrain piece, the Alexander's Palace. Before we jump into details, I feel obliged to warn you that this video is a composition of a lot of work in progress smaller videos, so both the video and audio quality can be all over the place. The project began in March 2021, and it was really an accident. I had a rather big MDF board, a Battletech Comstar building, which I printed on my Ender 3, but due to external issues, the building was warped in the back. It did not lay flat on the base. I wanted to either give it away or throw it away, but then I noticed I also have a thick piece of cork tile that was laying on my desk, which was also supposed to be thrown away. After a quick fitting, an idea springed my mind. What if instead of discarding the defect, I would embrace it and treat it as a natural constraint of the build. That kicked off my ingenuity and in a short while I had a mocked up prototype with some additional palace ground elements, which as it turns out, changed later on in the build process. The first step was preparing the cork to make it a little bit more natural and a little bit more fitting. These edges here are not a problem because they're going to be touching the building. So they're going to be flush with the building, but these ones, I'm not a big fan of these almost 90 degree steps. So what I'm going to do is just cut a little bit off from the top here and there. After that, it was time to put some paint on it. Put the first layer of Vallejo Cold Grey on a lot of items. I've painted up some paths from the landing pad and also to the steps and to the AA gun. Only a zenithal, so you can see the, uh, the lower part of the building is black, while the upper part is greyish. I'm going to do either blue or kind of some kind of cement next see you soon oh no first white pure white i'm going to catch the brightest spots on these on this construction once the zenithal was in place it's time for the blue first my prime blue and a makeup brush Yeah, I don't like it. It would be a good touch up, but it's not a good starting point. We tried the experiment, it failed. Now what we're going to do is hook up the airbrush and spray it all with some Vallejo Game Ink Blue. The end effect of spraying everything with blue ink looks like this, and I gotta say I like it. The lighting is not the best, but it should give you a rather good view of how things are progressing. Next stage of the palette's build slash paint contains actually painting all of the concrete blockades, the AA gun with uh, browns and stairs, with brown sepia and dry brush them with cement. I'm not too fond of how they came out and I'll probably change them because not right now they have a rather strange almost wood-like color. The statues were done with a mix of retributor armor and black ink. 
the windows I started off here with red ink over the the blue ink some red paint and orange and some white dots the window frames were were painted exactly like the statues here so black ink with retributor armor and highlighted with pure retributor armor i like this window the rest they're a bit mm, not as vibrant as i'd like so i'll probably redo them the final step that was done now it is this star let me get a better angle ah oh, there you go base is gunmetal metal or no base is actually iron breaker mixed with black ink followed by edge highlighting with pure iron breaker and then more edge highlighting with iron breaker mixed with white the lines that you see here that's not light reflection that's actually painted up i'm not too fond of the base itself because it's rather flat i was thinking about adding some kind of texture more details to it so i found something under a hive ish and printed it up it's real nice it'll get the job done and the details here as yeah, you can see that they're not etched into the tile they're printed on the tile so the flat surface is lower than the than the detail and that's what i'm going to try to re reproduce here using nothing else than scraps this is a brim when you print tiles, or when I print tiles, I actually print them with a brim to make sure that they stick well and they do not warp. Then the brim is removed and normally thrown away. But if you trim the brim, you get something that will allow us to get quite a nice detail. I'll put some here, some here. Some, and in a few other places basically to simulate a tile system beneath all of this without actually doing a tile system beneath all of this after a few additions here's how it looks currently the line I've added two two types of lines one is wide and it indicates a bigger tile the other ones are quite small and delicate they're actually made from a line that is made by the printer to clean its nozzle as it begins its print so I always throw this away and I had like two or three lying around and decided that hey, these are actually quite nice details. So at the moment, forgive the mess and you can see that there's a lot of glue here, but that'll vanish under paint. At the moment it looks like this. It's not perfectly square as you'll see, but You'll never notice it on the gaming board. Square and square-ish enough for me. Yeah, I really like how this went. Probably we'll add a bit more here, like and here, so that the details are spread evenly. After adding the panel lines, I decided to do a test paint job, only adding brown elements in the let's say more dirty or used places but I'm not really happy with it it's not enough 
I think I need to add it on the entirety of these soon to be metal panels. I also did a quick coat of white, not white, to sharp the bone. And I'm not too fond of the result, to be honest. That's why I decided to add even more panel lines here, here, and over there to make it even more interesting. Ah, I also, uh, you might have seen this already, window, and I repeat the same steps on all the other windows. The previous ones were a little bit dull, so I went over again and fixed it, and this time it's much better. You still need to do the window frames with gold, but that's a later step. Also these. I like how the star came out. I will follow the steps to reproduce. After finishing up the paint job, this is how the end result looks like. The blue fits in nicely with the bone base and the grey stones. Also I think that the windows fit right in. Everything seems toned down, but really classic. I'd say. The entire color composition is nice and it shouldn't bring too much attention from the actual miniatures which are the heroes of the show. Let's start off with what I'm not really fond of in this build. Well, first of all, the quality of the statues, if I can get a proper focus. You can clearly see that they're FDM printed and I could do a much, much better job they were actually oh, this this shows it perfectly they were actually printed as a test print this one in particular I was supposed to throw them away but then again I was supposed to throw away also the, this entire palace so this is a piece of what can I do with things that I'm supposed to throw away and Quite a lot actually, if you think about it. So uh, looking at it now, I would definitely do better quality prints for future pieces. Number two is, are these barricades, or rather not the barricades themselves, and also these, these stairs here, this little bridge here. it around and this AA gun here what I'm not happy about their color they're brown they look like wood like wooden elements at first I really liked it but looking at it now after a few months I'm not convinced they should probably be some kind of gray that would make them actually hard to pop up from this gray rock but brown wasn't the best, the best choice. I would definitely do it in a different way next time. Number three is a non-obvious one. I'm both very happy and very unhappy with the thing that I want to talk about now. And I mean these panel lines here, 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 basically the entirety of the board. On one hand, I really like them. They really give character. They really give the entire board, in my opinion, sense, meaning, that character, they make the board pop up. It's not a dull, even, a few, even if I would use a few colors, it's not dull, it's not non-interesting. There's something happening there, there are, there are lines, there are separations, you can clearly see that those are different segments. Yeah? that's that's really nice on the other hand the issue that i will have with this one is that these as i mentioned in the build details these are leftover scraps trash from fdm prints and i don't do any fdm prints anymore or i haven't done any in a very long time 
And the issue that I'm having is that I don't have any more to continue this style. And they're not really replicable on a resin kind of printer. At least not easily for me. So that's actually becoming an issue which I did not expect entirely. The last thing that I want to talk about, also not as obvious as you might think, it's the board. I don't have anything against FDM, it's, it's okay, it's not too thick, it's not too thin, I think it goes pretty well with bases, and it's basically the same, so that's not an issue. The issue that I'm having is its size. I want to do a 6mm city with tiles that are either 15 by 30 or 30 by 30 or maybe 15 by 15 some smaller items. The issue I'm having with this one this is not 30 this is also not 30 so I need to do something to make it a 30 by 30 it's a 24 by 24 a little bit too small it's giving me a very hard time in my OCD that it's a little bit too small and if I had more room then I could plan it out a little bit better or maybe even more than a little bit better I'm planning on adding some kind of brim to this and the other thing that I just came up with is that this brim is going to have a different style it's probably going to have a style more similar to the tiles that I've, that I've printed that I want my city to be more maybe not grim darkish but definitely more detailed I don't want to build the entire board with these lines even if I had these lines I want to use the printers that I have to well, prepare the base and then just paint it or maybe add a little bit of detail to the bases themselves I don't want to go through the process of creating the base entirely as I have done here and that's gonna be an issue because this is going to pop up and it's going to pop up in a bad way because it's going to be surrounded by tiles that have a little bit of a different aesthetic and I'm not sure much more but definitely more and definitely different type of, of base details so that's going to be a little bit of an issue but nothing ground nothing groundbreaking nothing actually blocking I think that was all on the negatives now to the positives I'm really really super hyped that I was actually able to finish this I tried a little bit of this and a little bit of that new techniques and they came out very good despite being not really happy with the lines as an unsustainable uh, unsustainable solution I really like them they came out great Another thing that I'm really happy about are these cork rock formations. I was not convinced that they're going to be a good outcome, but they turned out very great, very fine, very great. Not the best wording, but you know what I'm talking about. And last but not least, I'm happy with the entirety of this piece. Yeah, I was supposed I was, supposed, I was thinking about throwing this away because it was so badly curved up but in the end I was able to use the disadvantage of this piece to create something nice I took the limitation it brought with itself and made it into into an interesting evolution instead of a handicap. That's it, both the entire build process and my afterthoughts. I wanted to create this video as a closure to the entirety of the project. The next planned videos will be completely different, 
So stay tuned. And remember that if you liked the content, like, share and subscribe to please the YouTube algorithm. Have a good one. Bye.